Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and Assalamu Alaikum. I welcome you all to Prep Diva. My name is Fiza Kamran and I will be teaching economics on this platform. Our today's topic is based on AS syllabus and the first chapter is resource allocation. Resource allocation is a very easy chapter and it is part of unit 1. The four main components are planned economy, free market economy, mixed economy, and reallocation of resources. So in order to get your concepts cleared, stay tuned. Starting off with the basic definitions, planned economy, an economic system where all the resources are owned and controlled by the government. Planned economy may government is solely in charge and the government is producing and selling all the goods and services itself. There is no private intervention. Also, planned economy has government-based objectives. Government ka major objective is the well-being and welfare of the society. Hence, a planned economy has to incorporate the well-being and the welfare of the society in all of the operations it taking place. Moving on to free market economy. Free market economy is an economic system where all the resources are owned and controlled by private individuals. Unlike the planned economy, free market economy may private sector is solely in charge and there is no government intervention. Similarly, just say planned economy may government objectives apply or free market economy may private sector objectives apply on it. Or private sector ka subse bada objective is profit maximization. On the other hand, mixed economy. Mixed economy is a combination of both free market economy and planned economy. Mixed economy may government or private sector milk or goods or services produce karte or consumers ko sell out karte. Resources. Resources are the inputs used to produce and distribute goods and services. These are the FOPs, factors of production. Four factors of production are there, land, labor, capital, and enterprise. Moving on to the advantages of planned economy. Planned economy, may prices are set affordable. Why? Because government wants that even the poorest people are able to afford the necessities of life in the country. That's why prices are affordable. Set Moreover, there is increased production of merit goods and very less consumption and production of demerit goods, keeping in mind the welfare of the society and as the government does not want to harm the society by producing demerit goods. Moreover, there is mass provision of employment opportunities. Government ka ek aim job provision bhi hota hai. Job opportunities provide karne ki wajah se government uh, ka economy ka GDP increase hota hai. Isi liye. Or uh, last point hai, equal distribution of income, income and wealth. This reduces the gap between the rich and the poor, which is also an objective for the government. However, there are some disadvantages. Planned economy, mein, there is lack of innovation because there is no need for new technology. The government has to keep the prices affordable and it has to produce a standardized quality. Hence, the government does not have any incentive to get new technology or add new features as that will raise the price of the product which the government does not want. Moreover, there is no competition. Hence, there is no incentive for the government to improve its quality as well. This leads to ignorance of consumer will as they have to use the same standard products all over again. And they don't have any variety. The examples of planned economy include North Korea and Cuba. Planned economy is also known as controlled economy, command economy, and central planning. So I hope the concept for planned economy is pretty much clear. Now we will be moving on to free market economy. Free market economy also has a bunch of advantages. Since in a free market economy, the private sector objectives are profit maximization, 
they are highly competitive and they want to gain as much sales and profits as possible. So they have to capture the greatest market. All of them are in a race constantly. So they provide high quality, competitive prices and greater variety. There is higher technological advancement as well because uh, they want to constantly improve their product quality by adding new features, for example. Uh, moreover, they also uh, try to incorporate new technological equipments and uh, machineries into their production process in order to increase their efficiency and increase their output. This also leads to a better quality, which leads to con greater consumer sovereignty as the consumer is able to enjoy better uh, quality output and greater variety also. However, free market economy also has some disadvantages. Since the private sector's aim on profit maximization, they, they in the urge of maximizing profit, sometimes exploit the consumers. There is also increased risk of private monopolies as private monopolies can uh, charge high prices, produce low quality goods and maximize their profits. And as the, as the um, consumers would be exploited, it would um, reduce their, it was reduce their power. Overproduction and consumption of demerit goods. Also, since they only look at the profit maximization aspect, they will produce demerit goods and they will encourage consumption of demerit goods as they are regardless of the impact it has on the society. Moreover, there is underproduction of merit goods because there is less demand for merit goods. And when there is less demand for merit goods, there is very less potential for getting pro profit out of that market. And that's why they are not going to produce merit goods. Moreover, there will be increased wealth gap as rich will become richer and poor will become poorer due to the income gap between the private producers and the normal public. Free market economy is also known as free economy, market economy, and pure economy. So I hope till now it's clear. Uh, the last topic is reallocation of resources. Reallocation of resources means redistribution of resources. So why does this happen? In a planned economy, whenever the government sees that um, the welfare of the society is greater in, for example, promoting education, then uh, promoting um, the, then promoting the um, health standards, they are going to shift the health employed resources to the education sector in order to gain uh, more benefit for the society. As there is a listed definition over here, the government compares the goods and produces the most beneficial goods for the welfare of the society. However, it takes a lot of time and there is immense burden on the government. The burden includes administrative and financial both. Uh, whereas a free market economy redistributes or reallocates its resources in order to respond to changing consumer demands in order to maximize profits. Since the free market economy is highly competitive, they need to be very flexible and need to respond to uh, changes in demand very quickly. They take very less time and um, this is good for them. Lastly, uh, thanks for watching. Follow Prep Diva. Fiza Kamran, signing up.